Good morning. I am extremely happy to be here this morning with you. I was extremely happy to be here all weekend talking to the kids, and uh, it has been outstanding this weekend. You have an outstanding and you should be very proud of them as we're switching audio here. And uh, we are, I am extremely thankful for the eldership here and for the uh, leadership for Brett thinking about me to bring me all the way up here to the great commonwealth of Kentucky. And uh, I was an intern in Paris for two summers back about 10 years ago. And uh, I really enjoyed my time up here and I have enjoyed it this weekend. We're going to be in that scripture that we just talked about this right here. It's Ephesians chapter 6 beginning in verse 18. And it was just read for us, but I do want to read it one more time so that we get the full meaning of what we're looking at here this morning. Pray at all times in the spirit is what Paul says nearing his end of his comments here. He says, pray at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints and also for me that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. We're going to talk this morning about being a, having prayerful perseverance, say that five times fast, right? Prayerful perseverance and a bold ambassador. Let's go to the next slide. When I think of an ambassador, I think of, there we go, there's a scripture, let's go to the next slide. When I think of an ambassador, I think of a diplomat. That's what my mind goes to. I think of a diplomat. And say, if you're thinking about the U.S. ambassador to China, what is his job? His job is to represent the interests to, of the United States to Chinese, the Chinese leadership. His job is to represent everything economic, everything military, everything, just as if the president was there just as if a, another dignitary was there. That's his job. An ambassador is a representative. Now, when I think about a representative, the thought process leads me, because I have a background in marketing and advertising, I got a degree in marketing and youth ministry from um, Fried Hartman, I think about billboards, okay? I've got some funny billboards to show you this morning, but I think about billboards. What do billboards do? Billboards are one of the most common forms of advertising. All they do, you think about all they do, is they represent that company or that organization or whatever it else is that they're advertising. That's what they are representing. This right here, somebody got fired for this right here. Okay, that was bad placement right here. Childhood obesity, don't take it lightly. And then McDonald's right below it. Okay, somebody got fired for that somewhere. Let's go to the next one. I like some of these. This one's great. Time for Siebelman's Fitness Center, right? I love some of these. Let's go to the next one. This one right here is actually really cool. They, I, I watched a video about how they made it and everything. That's just that's advertising uh, one of the Batman movies uh, that came out a couple of years ago. Let's go to the next one. That one's great. <laughs> that needs no explanation, does it? <laughs> and then the final one right here. I love this one right here. That's a pretty good advertisement. Right? I wonder if there's a guy that goes with like a mower every single day and makes sure that it looks like it's been, okay, never mind. So you get what we're talking about. Let's go to the next slide. We are Christ's ambassadors. We are walking representatives. We are walking billboards for Jesus Christ. So my question this morning is, what are we advertising? What are we being an ambassador of? Paul here says in verse 20 that he is boldly proclaiming the gospel to which he is an ambassador in chains. Why would he say in chains here? Why would he do that? Why would he say in chains? Well, it's because he's in prison. If you've read any part of the New Testament, especially the lots of books, Paul wrote I think two-thirds of the New Testament. He's in prison a lot. He gets thrown in prison a lot. And that's not because he was a criminal. It's not because he was a, a thief or a murderer. It's because he was proclaiming the gospel. The Roman Empire at that time, and I love Roman history, but the Roman Empire at that time was trying to maintain what they called the Pax Romana, Roman peace. They had a vast territory to basically control. They controlled the known world at that time, and they were stretched very thin at Paul's time. 
And they did not want insurgencies. They did not want any kind of revolutions. So they would throw people like Paul in prison just for speaking and teaching the gospel of Jesus. But that just goes to show that Paul is definitely braver than I am. Because given the threat of jail, given the threat of prison time, I might not be so bold at proclaiming Christ. And I think most of us could say the same thing. But this just goes to show that Paul is so convinced and he is so committed to the cause of Christ that his own life doesn't even seem to matter sometimes. And I think that is one of the true characteristics of a Christian. What kind of ambassador for Christ are you being this morning? What kind of representative, what kind of ambassador will you be tomorrow morning when you go to school, when you go to work? What kind of ambassador will you be? We are walking representatives for God, and whether we like it or not, people see us as Christians. They see how we act. They see what we say, who we hang out with, the clothes that we wear, the things that we like, the things that we talk about, the things that we find important. They see these things. You are the only Bible that someone will read. There may not be someone that picks up a Bible their entire life, but they will see what you are. They will see you as a representative of Christ, and they will see the church. That's what we need to remember every, every day because when we do things like make sporting events, kids or adults, it doesn't really matter. When we make sporting events a priority instead of worship, we're advertising or we're representing the fact that worship just isn't important. When we go to a party and we drink or we smoke or we take part in some kind of impure activity or anything like that, we're representing the fact that our bodies are not temples for God, holy and purposeful. When we hang out with friends that we know we shouldn't hang out with, when we do these different things, we're representing the fact that we place being popular or being renowned or being accepted over being holy. You see, when we put ourselves in the place of representing something, it changes the way that we look. It affects how we look at our daily walk with God, doesn't it? We just got done, let's go to the next slide, with midterm elections here. And I know some of y'all may be fond of this gentleman and some of you may not. But even down in Tennessee, we heard up here in Kentucky there was a pretty big fight. And there were some pretty weird and nasty things said. But who is Mitch McConnell? Is he just a guy that sits in Washington? Some of you would nod your head and go, yeah, that's all he does, right? But who, what is he supposed to do? He is supposed to represent the interests of the people of the great commonwealth of Kentucky, is he not? That's his job. That's what he's supposed to do. That's what you reelected him for. And as Christians, we have the same job to represent Christ in a way so that people will come to know who he is, not us. I'm telling young and old people right now, we are in a situation in our world like has never been in, in the course of human history. We need you. We need you to kindly and to boldly represent Christ in all facets of your life. Because this world gets darker and crazier every single day. And I'm not just talking to young people. I'm talking to everyone here this morning. We need to step up. And we need to be ambassadors for Christ. And that doesn't involve going to polls. It doesn't involve protesting it involves kindness, it involves love, it involves respect and goodwill toward men and teaching them about Jesus Christ and Him crucified. My dad, let's go to the next slide, was in construction, kindly and boldly, there we go. My dad was in construction for a long time and for years I was in and out of around all these different construction sites and he would sometimes take me to them and everything, let me wear the hard hat, you know, it was really, really cool. And any of you who have built a house you know that it is just a monumental task. Now think about building a house versus building an apartment complex or building a skyscraper. I watched a documentary on building the New World Trade Center the other day on Netflix. Unreal how much stuff goes into that. It takes a lot of detail. It takes a lot of attention to detail, and it takes planning and preparation. It takes contractors. It takes different people, welders, Concrete pours, nail drivers, even to just build the simplest structure, it takes all these different things. And in 1 Kings chapter 5, 
there's an interesting passage. Solomon is seeking out King Hiram to help him with the construction of the temple. And it gives some numbers here and it lists them down if you want to look at it. There were 30,000 laborers summoned to build the new house of the Lord. There were 70,000 who carried burdens. There were 80,000 who were stone cutters. There were just 80,000 guys who cut rocks. There were 3,300 who supervised. And the thing that we need to remember about this passage is that all of these were essential jobs. All of these were essential people. And they were all different types of work. All contributing to a house that would glorify God. Church, I'm telling you this morning, God wants people. He wants you. He doesn't want Christian superheroes. He doesn't want super elders. He doesn't want super... De- he wants you. He wants servants. God wants you to understand that you are essential to the church and you must represent him here on earth and you must be his ambassadors here. So number one, an ambassador for Christ. The second one that we're going to talk about, the second point this morning, going to the next slide, is having prayerful perseverance. Let's go to the next slide. I told the kids a lot of different stories about being in the Marine Corps this weekend and I told them some funny things that happened, and I told them some not-so-funny things that happened. But one of the coolest things that I ever got to do was be in a C-130 squadron. That's a C-130. It's not really accurate. It's not a Marine Corps C-130, but it's an Air Force one. They're refueling a helicopter there. And in case you're wondering about the way a chopper works, yes, that actually does work. And it's actually very, very cool. It may not sound like it. It may not look like it. But it's actually very, very cool. Because when you're standing up on that flight station and you're looking out, And on the eastern seaboard of the United States, you can see New York City. And to your right, you can see an F-15 who is able to complete its mission by patrolling up and down the eastern seaboard because you brought fuel to it. That's pretty cool. As a flight engineer, I didn't have too much to do with the fuel systems. But there is these huge 250,000 gallon tanks that can be wheeled up in the back of these C-130s and attached to two things that go out to these buckets that you see on the screen there. And so I was talking with the fuel guy one day and I was asking him a couple of questions and he told me, he said, yeah, you see these two pipes that go out to the engines here? You can actually redirect those. You just hit this lever, you just hit this lever and you can redirect the flow and you can actually travel on that jet fuel that's in your tank. You could technically go around if the engines would hold out, which they wouldn't, You could technically go around the world three times on that fuel. That to me is amazing. When we're talking about prayer, let's go to the next slide. When we're talking about prayer, we're talking about a Christian's fuel. We're talking about our Christian's energy. It's what keeps us going. When Paul says to say, he says pray always in this scripture. In Ephesians 6, he says, pray always. He doesn't mean necessarily having an unending or unbroken prayer throughout the day. Some of you may do that. Some of you may be in a constant prayer to God. There's nothing wrong with that. But I don't think that's what Paul is talking about here. I think it's fantastic that we have the ability to communicate in 2014 like we do. I could call somebody across the ocean. I could contact or text or Skype or email somebody and communicate with them, literally anyone anywhere in the world. My wife and I have had a constant, you know how it is, a constant texting conversation the entire time I've been gone this weekend. And that's kind of what it's like. That's kind of what it's like when we're praying at all times. It's keeping the conversation open. God is our Father, and we should lay everything, not just our problems, but our our thanksgivings, our blessings, everything. We should be laying everything at His feet. But how often do we just pray to Him or how often do we just run to God when things are going badly in our lives? Not only does Paul tell us to pray always, but he tells us to keep alert. Pray always and keep alert. When Nehemiah was repairing the walls of Jerusalem and the enemy was trying to stop the work, Nehemiah was able to defeat that enemy by watching and praying. Nehemiah 4.9 says, We made a prayer to God and we set a watch. Peter went to sleep when he should have been watching and praying. We remember that, don't we? And as a result, it was a victory for Satan in Mark 14, 29, and 31. 
And then there's a part where perseverance comes in. What does perseverance mean? That's just a big word for sticking to it. Sticking to it and not quitting. Let me ask you this morning. Do you ever feel like your prayers are just bouncing off the ceiling? Do you ever feel like that you're praying to God, that you're giving Him your all and you're laying these things at your feet and He's just not listening? Some people feel like that sometimes. You see, I'm convinced that most of us, number one, underestimate the power of prayer. And two, we quit right before God starts His work. The early church in Acts 12 prayed without ceasing when Peter was in prison. And at the last moment, in a little bit of dramatic fashion, God gave them their answer. I don't think that God does things in our lives and praying for them to be dramatic. I think He does them to prove a point. Maybe that He's the one in charge and we're not. We do not control our lives or destinies. God does. And keep on praying until the Spirit stops you or the Father answers you. This weekend I've gotten to talk about a lot of different stuff. Let's go to the next slide here. I've got to talk a lot about a lot of different great stuff. We talked about the Christian armor. We talked about how our Christian lives are a battlefield, not a playground. We talked about the armor of God. We talked about how to use this spiritual armor every single day to withstand the temptations of Satan. We talked about being an ambassador this morning, a representative of Christ, and using prayer as our main way to encourage and communicate with God. My encouragement to you this morning is that we are not fighting this battle alone. You are not alone. You are not fighting by yourself. There are others who believe you're sitting right amongst them right now. There are others who are wearing the armor. We can be encouraged by the ones sitting around us just today. So th if this morning I'll ask the question I asked the kids all weekend about referring to our Christian armor, are you ready to put it on? And if you've taken it off, maybe you're a Christian and you've taken that armor off, are you ready to put that back on? Are you ready to be a bold ambassador for Christ? Maybe you're a Christian and you've taken off the armor for whatever reason, and maybe you've been a bad representative for Christ. The great thing is that you can always be forgiven. You just have to ask. Maybe you're not a Christian. Maybe you want to be forgiven of your sins and you need to be cleansed in baptism. You can do that this morning. Don't wait. Make a decision this very morning. Why don't you come now, right now, while we stand and while we sing?